We were, I think, home for a month, maybe two months, um, tops, and writing pretty much every day for that whole period before we went in the studio. I think we wanted to take another step further away from our contemporaries. I think before we even had a chance to decide that we were going to be different, we were different already because of Jordan and the way he played drums. We had focused more on songwriting at this point, not on parts. It's okay if that repeats itself. It's a good thing to do. So we kind of started writing choruses. Dallas and I started singing together. And we started looking at the songs as this is what's best for the song. I think we knew how to make a record at that point. You know, um, before we were just kind of ch chopping away and experimenting. Now we knew how to make a record. We knew how to write songs. Jordan's characteristics were, were so much different than Jesse's. His style of playing was so different that inevitably the songs were gonna be different. Even if Wade and I came up with all the same riffs, the songs would have been different. We knew what worked with a crowd, and you could see how stuff we'd done on our last records, you know, you'd see the stuff that really resonated with the crowd, and then with Crisis, I feel like we just flexed that. Well, we were working with Julius again, we were working with Juice, and then he brought in Nick Blagona, where Nick Blagona comes on the scene, who is uh, a legendary Canadian-born record producer who did every record in the 70s. He's a great guy. He's done stuff with uh, Deep Purple and The Police and like Stevie Nicks and like so many different different acts that he's been around for. He's an older guy. And just some of the stories and just getting to work with him. And he got drum sounds in like what seemed like 15 minutes. He's just like, all right, go and play. So I played for, you know, maybe five minutes tops. He's like, all right, come on in. And shows me what he's recorded after literally, you know, no time at all. And it sounds massive. Super old school dude. And, um, you know, we were able to reference all these things with him. Like, oh, he'd say, what do you want this to sound like? And we're like, like that part on the Deep Purple record you did. Or this kind of reverb, like, whatever. I think that was the first time we got to play like main stage Reading and Leeds Festival, which was a big deal. Here you are at like arguably like one of the bigger musical events you can play. Here's, you know, 80,000 people are in front of you, you know, and like this is as big as it gets. Like, it was notoriously fickle that, that stage as well. Like if they didn't like you, you knew it immediately. So that was what we were going up against, right? Like we were this, you know, this young band, people like me, people are starting to know about us, but like not 80,000 people know about us. So we had to kind of go up there and be confident and, 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 and do it. And because the second you show a sign of like fear, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna eat you alive <laughs> is what you kind of felt like. So that was, that was a really fun, exciting experience. That was pretty intimidating walking out and then, uh, you know, seeing 80,000 people in front of you is pretty intimidating. So I was definitely nervous. I think we all were a bit. And then once you kind of get into the flow of it, by the second song, your nerves just kind of ease away and you just kind of focus on the crowd and continue on. And you're fortunate if you ever get to experience it, for sure. Uh, Brixton Academy in the UK. You know, maybe the time before we played in London, we played to 1,000 people. Then we went back to Brixton and there was 4,000 people there. And it's like one of the most iconic venues in England if not the world, and you know, it's, it was a place I'd heard The Clash singing about, and uh, we played there, we headlined there, and that was unbelievable. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the Crisis Tour had the show where we played with Billy Talent in uh, Quebec City at Festival d'Ete, which is the big summer festival. I remember we flew there from Newfoundland, so we had a guitar each and our pedals. And we showed up at this stage. It was just this mammoth, Woodstock looking stage in the hugest field. And I remember calling our booking agent up to be like, you have made a huge mistake. This is going to be the worst show ever. Even if 10,000 people show up, which they're not going to, this is going to be a disaster. Like, this place is so big. It's 8 p.m. It's time to go on stage. 80,000 people. It was insane. We got to play with a lot of really cool bands that I that I never envisioned playing with. Stuff like uh, Metallica and Deftones and Faith No More and Jane's Addiction and all these 
crazy, crazy bands that I never thought we would ever play with. Uh, and it was really rad. Like the whole touring experience, once we released Crisis, we just got blown in this whirlwind of constantly touring the world. I think we were out for pretty much two years straight, if not more. I remember at the end of our tour cycle, we did uh, uh, nine shows in Toronto where we, we started in like the reverb in Toronto, which is like, you know, maybe 250 people. And we slowly built up the, the stages that we were playing on. And then we were, you know, went to the Opera House, we went to the Phoenix, did some shows at the Phoenix, and then we, we started selling shows for the Cool House, which is like 2,000 capacity. And we were like, originally it was just gonna be so many shows and we'd end in the Cool House, but then they just kept selling the Cool House. That was when we were like, wow, this is massive. Like, this is really big and beyond anything we could have possibly imagined. It was like an absolutely amazing time. Uh, we were acting like complete maniacs. I wouldn't change it for the world, but I definitely do remember um, one moment where we were in, we we're in the UK and uh, I went down the stairs to get a beer out of the fridge. The bus is driving down the highway. And our bus, for some reason, the door would swing open. It was like this pneumatic door. And it's supposed to have a sensor on it that prevents you from doing that when it's moving. Bumped into the button that opens up the door. And the door opens on the highway and I almost fell out. M middle of the fucking highway too, like he would have been dead. He would have gotten run over. Yeah, so I remember that. I feel like there's maybe a few too many moments like that. Hmm. Crisis is where it started getting a little out of control. Just because we had sort of gotten to this, we'd gotten to this level of popularity in certain places like Canada and England and, you know, we were becoming a big rock band. When you're kids, you know, that's a little difficult to take at, at, at first. You, know, you have to learn how to do that. Crisis was, was a big one. That was obviously the biggest, uh, it was the biggest record we'd sold to date. It debuted at number one, I think. And when you go from being a kid in a small town in Canada who plays guitar, to a kid from a small town in Canada who plays guitar, who people recognize on the street, you have to adapt. I, mean, I never had like these kind of like world dominating kind of like let's be let's have platinum records and kind of stuff, but we were getting there. We were definitely at a higher point than we were when we started at at that record, getting a lot of attention, and, and which is which is awesome, which is always what you want when you're in a band. But uh, we were definitely sick of each other um, because we'd been living in arm's length one other, and we needed to like not be in a van together. Um, we toured ourselves into the ground. So there was a desire to kind of like trim back the amount of shows we were playing. We'd broken through whatever our glass ceiling was a couple of times. We'd always, we jumped up the, the stakes and I think we, we were feeling the, a bit of pressure, you know, upon like, okay, it's time to write a record. We were also so tour wary, like, you know, we'd been on the road for 10 months on that record. And that was, I think that was really stressing everyone out. It started to wear on us, you know? So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that everything sucked, because it didn't. It was some of the best moments of, of our career. But I think what I most remember about that time is sort of starting to feel like I needed to do something a little different. I feel like that was the time when uh, life kind of caught up with us. We'd been, you can put a pin in it when you go on the road and like kind of stop all these relationships and you kind of got to pick everything back up. And I feel like that's when it happened, you know. People started, you know, getting in and out of relationships, reconnecting with people, getting married. I think too because a lot of the tours we were doing on those, on the Crisis Tour was, they were great for us, the shows were great. But we were on tours where we weren't being inspired by any of the music we were surrounded by. So I just found sort of solace in different styles of music and and my acoustic guitar. And not that I was trying to distance myself from, from aggressive music, but I just had I just didn't have the interest in it anymore. At least not to write it. That, with that, at the end of that cycle, we were like very, um, we we're all very happy and um, in our own in our own ways. Uh, and yeah, it was it was a cool it was a cool moment in our career. I think I really knew that we were a good band after touring with, with Crisis because of having Jordan in the band. And, you know, not only were the new songs awesome, but we had turned all the old songs. I thought we'd gotten, the old songs were even better now, just because sort of the way he uh, 
he changed the sound of the band. Being in a band, you, uh, you're in this perpetual state of being a teenager, but we weren't teenagers anymore. And uh, so I feel like everything kind of not came crashing down. Like it wasn't a really negative thing, but all of a sudden it was like, I don't know, six, seven years kind of went by in a flash. And it was like, I guess it's time to do some adult stuff. Yeah.